Hey guys, this is Michael Tarala with Click. In this video, I will provide a brief update to the ClickSense map object available in ClickSense 1.1. Please refer to the other two videos in this series to learn about the process used when creating both point maps and polygon maps. For those of you who have used the previous version of the map object, you will notice a few welcome changes. Our goal for this release was to make it even easier to use maps out of the box for individual users who may or may not be very technical. Let's take a look. So the first thing I'd like to demo is the new default background for point-based maps. By teaming up with Mapbox, a provider of comprehensive mapping solutions, we provide a simplified mapping experience without the need to negotiate usage agreements or pay additional fees. When adding a map object to the sheet, the Mapbox map service will be used by default. Please note this does require a live internet connection in order to connect to the service. However, if you want to use another map service or your own map service, that option is available for configuration by providing the URL of what is known as the Slippy map service. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to cover is the color by expression that we've added to the properties panel uh, under appearance for colors of legend. So as you know, by default, we'll place a point on top of the particular location. In this case, we're using the latitude and longitude for city. And the size of the bubble or point represents the metric that we're measuring, in this case, sum of sales. Well, we can show that with a single color, or we can say by measure. And what that'll do is provide you with the sequential gradient or different diverging classes of colors, where in this case, a darker color represents uh, the most number of sales. In that case, the size of the bubble also represents that. If I'd like to add another metric on top of this visually, I can say by expression. And in this case here, we have the expression is a color code. We're gonna uncheck that because it's not a color code. It's just gonna use the same uh, color scheme. And now the colors are, the darker colors are, are representing the higher number of products being sold. So if I go back by measure, and then I go by expression, you can see the difference in the map. However, you could put some advanced logic in here. If I wanted to choose this as a color code, we could utilize our color functions. Here's a, just a simple one for red, or maybe we just want to do green. Uh, you could use RGB colors as well, or you can use full expressions. In this case, I have one created where it says, if the city is equal to Eugene, make it green, else make everything else yellow. Okay, and you can do that as well. So very powerful capability, adding uh, control over how you would like to uh, represent the colors of the different points and boundaries depending on the type of map you want to use. The next thing I want to show you is the power of showing null values or having the option to toggle null values uh, depending on how you want to configure your map. In this case we're going to use a polygon map for this and I'm going to go into analyze mode and you can see I have some filters or list boxes. This one contains all the states uh, this one contains the continental states, in other words, it doesn't have Alaska or uh, Hawaii. And then this one just contains a subset of states that uh, I basically just said are in the northeast. And I'll go back into edit mode, and based off of the map that I have configured already, there's basically a data model that is linking all of these values together. And when I grab my map object, the first thing we're going to do here is just add all the states. Okay, and you can see every state is highlighted in blue with the coloring. That means that there is a corresponding value for all of these particular states. This checkbox here underneath the area layer for show null values really won't make a difference if you toggle it or not because there are, are values associated. So let's delete this and let's grab another map. And this time we're gonna add the dimension of continental states. And you can see by default when show null values is checked, it shows us Hawaii and, and Alaska. But if I uncheck that, it then configures the map to basically eliminate any of the states that have considered null values and allows us to now focus in on the continental US. Okay, and the same thing can go for another configuration that we have here for the northeast states. So once again, if I grab a map object, add dimension, and I'll select my northeast states and you can see the entire map that is available and then unchecking show null values. Now let's me focus in on those states within the northeast. 
Okay, so it's a very powerful feature allowing you to uh, get different configurations of the type of maps that you're looking for and obviously you can use multiple map objects um, for different comparison and complementary purposes uh, to represent your data. Uh, one of the other things I did want to show you as well is let me just go to the appearance, colors and legend, and I'm just going to change this to by dimension. And back into the uh, area under data, there is a opacity. This is your transparency, basically to kind of show more or less, depending on what kind of backgrounds you use. If you want to have labels on, for example, we could put a background on, um, which is that default map service, uh, map box, map service. And if you want to allow the labels to uh, shine through more or less, you can turn on the opacity. And that goes for the bubbles as well. Another welcomed improvement is the ability to take snapshots to use for the data storytelling feature of ClickSense. So what I'm going to do is take the same map that I configured a moment ago and I'm going to click on snapshot and what that'll do is highlight my particular map in that mode and then by selecting that object it puts it into my snapshot repository. And now if I go to data storytelling, create a new story, go to my snapshot repository, I can grab that particular object and place it as an object on my sheet that I'm going to represent within my story. For more information on data storytelling, see the other videos in the video series on the community page. Okay, so the last thing I'd like to show you is how we can use multiple sets of geospatial information. So in this app, I already have configured a map for the United States. And I've also added a map for the provinces of Spain, and they're configured on the state value. Again, you can refer to the other videos in the series to see how that is done. So let's grab two map objects. And we're going to grab our state dimension. And by doing so, you can see that it's now prompting me to select a layer. Do I want my US maps layer? or my Spain maps layer. In this case, I'll just choose Spain. And then while that's processing, I'll do the same thing for state on top of this map object, and I'll select the US states. So basically you're able to now plot multiple sets of geospatial information linked to your data set. Note I'm using the polygon maps here, um, but this is also applicable to the points maps. Thanks for taking the time to learn about some of the updates available in the ClickSense map object. If you have not done so, you can download ClickSense right now for free by visiting our website and clicking the free downloads button. And don't forget to visit the new to ClickSense forum on the Click community where you can quickly learn how to get started with ClickSense and join in the conversation with me and others. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next video.